Um, regarding Matthew 18, where it says, uh, forgive or else you will be tormented. What does that mean? Who torments, Satan or God? <laughs> there is self-torment. You know, uh, we, we don't want to just break it down to say that the Lord would torment. I'll, I'll answer the question more fully in a moment, but we need to remember that we can, we can be tormented by our own guilt. You know, John in 1 John says, uh, if um, our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. He knows all things. So there is self-condemnation. You can torment yourself. And so the parable there is referring to the, uh, the sin of unforgiveness and, and the man who refused to forgive a debt to somebody uh, when he himself had been freely forgiven um, an immeasurable debt. And the point Jesus was making there was related to a person who doesn't understand the depth of forgiveness will never be able to give forgiveness to somebody else. So a person who doesn't accept the forgiveness of God will always been, be in a state of torment. You know, uh, there's a, um, a phrase that is used that one Bible teacher used in reference to that man who was cast into the uh, place that, of torment until every last bit was paid. Um, and they referred to him as the debt collector. And the point that we're making is if you don't freely release people of the obligations that you think they, that they have towards you, if you don't release them, then you're always going to be wondering, when are they going to pay? When are they going to take care of this? And you will live in a state of torment. You will live in a state of a lack of peace, a lack of joy, a bitterness, because you haven't released to them, you know, you haven't released them of their debt. The word uh, forgiveness it's also, you know, forgive us our debts um, is speaking of something that somebody owes you. And forgiveness speaks of the releasing of that debt. So if somebody has hurt me and I hold it against them, I'm in a personal state of torment because I'm constantly so upset. I see them and I'm thinking as they smile at me in church and wave, how you doing? And I'm looking at them and I'm saying, that jerk owes me 50 bucks, I, you know, and, and I'm in a state of, tor I'm angry. I, let me tell you a story, a real story in this church. It happened, it happened, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, our church was less than a year old. I had a, I had a 1968 Ford pickup truck. And Marie was driving it to work. She was a school teacher. She was going to Chino. To, to substitute teach when the engine seized on her because I hadn't put oil in it. I forgot to put oil in it, and the engine froze. And so we had it towed to our house. It was sitting in front of my house for several months. I didn't have the money, obviously, to put an engine in it to repair it, so it just sat there. As it sat there, I met a guy who came to the church on occasion, was a friend of a friend in the church, who said, listen, I've got an engine that I can put in, that, in the truck. I'd like to buy your truck from you so I can put my engine in it. I'll give you $500 for your truck. Well, to me, that's fine. You want to give me $500 for a truck and you can put your engine in it? I think that's fair. So he came and he had the truck towed home to his house. I didn't see him again. I didn't see him again. I didn't see him for several months. And he never gave me the $500. But it was, it, it was nice to see that the front yard didn't have a truck cluttering it. You sit in there, you know. But, and so I, I went through this. I thought, man, you know, I, I, knew how to, I knew how to find him, you know. And I had friends in the Mexican mafia. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I knew how to take care of the dead. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I knew how to get hold of him. But I took it before the Lord, and I said to the Lord, I still remember how it went. I said, Jesus, he owes me $500. I'm just not going to be a, a debt collector. I'm just not going to. I'm, I'm going to let this go. I'm going to leave this in your hands. You've been taking care of me. We have a car we can drive. I'm good with that. I don't want to make an issue with him over something financial. I'm going to leave it alone. And that's what I did. And I, and I let it go. I actually forgot about it. And within a few months after all of this, after me praying and saying that to the Lord, 
he showed up at church one day. And I still remember him walking up and ha he handed me some money, you know, and he never said, I'm sorry for taking so much time to pay. And he never said a word like that. He just handed me the money. I smiled at him. And, uh, and I had actually pretty much forgotten that he owed it to me. So I, I really think that that's uh, uncertain situations. For me, that was the right thing to do. But in sinful situations, that is the right thing to do. I leave it alone. Why? God forgave me of my many sins and my many debts. So I ought to be quick to extend that to others who've been offensive to me. And so I can torment myself. The enemy can provoke me to remember and, and all, but the Lord doesn't torment. It isn't the Lord at all. It would be my own heart that's condemning me and it could be provoked by the enemy. But when I hand those things over to the Lord, I'm free. I'm set free. And that's how, it's, that's how it works in general.